All right, so welcome back. We're going to do the experimental part. Remember, this is lab four, capacitive circuits. Now, the circuit we're going to be looking at is up here on the board again. There's two capacitors in series, and then up here, this C3 is in series with C4 and C5, which is in parallel. There's a resistor down here, which is like the light bulb when I lit up the light bulb with the capacitor. That has nothing to really do with the experiment. It just makes the, the charging of the capacitor take a little bit longer so you can see it on the computer screen. And then there's your battery and there's the switch. So coming over to the table here, this is the, this is the battery right here and it's set for 8 volts. So on the positive lead right here, it comes out here to a switch and then over then you connect it right to this post which is attached to this metal right here and then on the other side here's the other post and when I close this thing then those two posts get connected together okay and now the current will flow out here and you can see there's a capacitor right there and notice there's two leads right here by the way these are called alligator clip leads because they got an alligator clip on the end of the wire and the wire is called a lead all right so that that's this one right here. So if you look up in the picture here, that's C1. Okay? Now we're going to go over to C2. So if you follow this wire right here, and I got to tape down to try to make things easy to see. There's the second capacitor here. There's C2. Then it comes over here and it connects to the resistor. So if you look over here, you can see C1 to C2 and then down to the resistor. So that's that connection right there. Now going back over here, you can see there's two connectors here. So the second lead goes up here, and there's C3 right there. And then it goes over here and connects to, now you look right here. See, I got this wire here and here. So these two guys are connected together, and then I bring this lead from C3 right onto one of them. But since there's a, a lead connecting the two, they're connected in unison. All right? And there's your two capacitors, C4, C5. Come over here, and then you see they come back together again. And and go home. So these two are connected together and that lead right there is coming here along with this guy. So if you look up in the screen, you see this wire right here coming off the two is coming down here, then this guy here connected to the resistor. And that completes the circuit. Now, I put a current sensor in here. So before this goes back to the battery, right in here, the sensor in here so the current has to flow through this thing so you can see the red wire right here going in here goes through this thing and then it sends the information to the 850, univer 850 universal interface which we're then going to see on the computer okay so that goes right there and then this is the final lead to the negative on the battery and I have it set for 8 volts Okay, so this sensor right here is measuring the current that's flowing out to the entire circuit. So this sensor sees what's called the equivalent capacitance of that circuit. So however you mathematically combine these things and you get your final capacitance, that's how much current, that's how much current per volt will go out there. So if it was like, um, let's say 300 microfarads, that means it'll send out 300 cool, uh, microcoulombs for every volt. And we have it at 8 volts right now. So it'll send out 8 times that value right there. Okay, so here's how it's done. So on the computer, I have it set up for a graph. And I have the, uh, let me use my mouse here. So I set up the hardware for the current sensor right there. And that's all you need. And then down here at the bottom, there's a record button that you're familiar with because you've used this equipment before. And down here it says current sensor, and I'm going to take 50 measurements a second. So we're going to look at the current, which is on the y-axis. So you click on that, and I clicked zero current because the sensor uh, doesn't zero itself. So this, I wrote a little program that will zero the sensor, so we'll get nice clean uh, data. And here's time on the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close the switch now, and we're going to turn the computer on so you can get back in there and tighten up on it. And so here, we're going to go ahead and push record, and you can see right now it's just saying zero, 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 and I'm going to close it up, and then boom. 
So you can see at the very beginning, the current was very fast, very large, and then it went to zero. So now I just turned it off. Now, the, what's really nice about Capstone is it'll do the integral for you. So up at the top, there's a little button right there for integral. And it integrates the current, the area under the curve. And so right here it says 3.6481 milliamp seconds, which turns out to be 3.648 uh, millicoulombs. Because an amp is a coulomb per second, and a second times a coulomb per second is a coulomb. Okay, so that's how you get the integration. It's a fantastic little program. And what's very cool is that you can take your current data from multi-sim and import it into capstone and you'll do that integral uh, for each for each voltage that you set the computer at okay so you can back up a little bit all right so that's that right there so now what you would do is you'd open this thing up now open the switch and you would take a lead uh, I had a lead let's see here's one right here and I'll take a lead, and then I can, I can uh, empty out all the charge on the plates. So I touch this side with this side right here, and it gets total, totally discharged. All right, that was 8 volts. So let's go way down to like 1 volt. Okay, how about 2 volts? All right, so I just cut the voltage in half. So we can go ahead and do it one more time, and you'll see, remember it was 3.48, 3.64, right? Eight, what was it? What's it say there? Milliamp seconds. 3.648, good. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll do it one more time. So I'm gonna go push record and close the switch. And you can see hardly any current at all because the voltage is so low. Open it up, we're all done. And the area is 0 0.862. Okay, and if you multiply uh, 8 times 4, you see you get up about 32. So you can see it's a nice linear relationship right there. But I shouldn't be telling you that. Hey, I didn't say that. Okay. All right, so that is the setup there. And now you also have to measure all the voltages, but I'm gonna show you in one second. This has a voltage meter right here. So for the first part of the experiment, you just, well, you'll be setting the voltage in multi-SIM, but if you're in the lab, you'd set the voltage, you'd discharge it, and then throw the switch and measure the charge. And so you got those two things, and you're gonna look at that on a graph. Then, when you're all done with the experiment, you pick a voltage. So I would pick 10 volts. Uh, because it's just a nice ni nice number. It also gives you four sig figs rather than three sig figs. And you always want to get as many sig figs as you can. So I'll go up to like 10 volts. That's good enough. And uh, now I'm going to charge up the circuit. Here we can actually run it one more time with 10 volts. And you can see it went much higher this time. And I didn't discharge it that last all right, that's good. Let me shut that off. All right, now it's all fully charged. And what I'm going to do last, the last thing, I'm going to measure the voltage on everything. So this is my voltmeter. I got it set for uh, DC volts right there. And I'm going to, how's that? Does that look okay? Yep. Okay, good. And all you do is you take the positive side, red, and the negative side, black, and you hold it on either side and you can measure the voltage. So that's 7.16 volts right there. And then you go over here and you measure the volts right there, 3.245. And you go up here and you get 4.98. And over here, we got 5.39. And here we should get the same voltage, 5.3, eh, not quite perfect, but 5.35, okay? And so that gives you all the voltages. By the way, voltage is a very easy measurement to make because you don't have to break open the circuit to make the measurement. You just take the probes and touch on either side and it's telling you how much energy per charge is stored uh, when you make that measurement. Now what you have to do is 
open it up, discharge it, and then you have to move the current sensor to one of the capacitors because you got to measure how much charge is on each capacitor. So just like this is sitting in the circuit right here, I could pull that out right there and um, put the circuit back to normal right there. And then I come over here, I need one lead, show you really quickly how to move it one time. And I'm gonna say, let's say I wanna get the charge on that capacitor right there. So I clip right here. See, I have to open the circuit and put in the meter like that. Okay, and that'll measure just the charge on that one capacitor. So you have to do this one at ten, like 10 volts. You gotta do every single capacitor. Make sure that your first measurement, when you're studying volt, uh, voltage and charge, make sure that that value is a value that you're using for the second part of the experiment. So you don't have to do that uh, measurement again. But anyway, that is the experimental procedures that you'll be following uh, for the experiment. So I hope that is clearer than mud, and uh, we're going to check out on that one right there. So we'll see you in lab five. Take care.